and I'm joined by Mr. Jason Midzi from the Zimbabwe People's Party. How are you, sir? Thank you, Mr. Gambakwe. I'm very fine, and uh, we are all good. Right. Today, we are going to be looking at what happened midweek. Professor Jonathan Moyo came out and spoke for the first time on video for a very long time. I think it was almost 40 minutes. Did you manage to watch that uh, statement or what he was saying? Yeah, I listened to what uh, Professor Jonathan Moy was saying. Uh, yeah, I think I got all of it and I got everything that he was saying. Okay. So, firstly, I want to ask you, why do you think after such a long time, almost two years, he's coming out for the first time to talk about his views? Uh, I think he, he saw that he is first becoming irrelevant in uh, the Zimbabwean political system and he has to rekindle his uh, uh, political activism and his politics and his relevance as a politician in Zimbabwe. Okay. And you in your party, you're always talking about the diaspora. Do you think academics in the diaspora have a role to play and what kind of role should they play? Is what Professor Jonathan Moore is doing the right thing? Uh, what I can say is uh, academics in the diaspora, I, can, I, I can't say academics as such. I can say Zimbabweans who are in the diaspora, are both academic and non-academic, have a big role to play in Zimbabwe. Uh, in that case, uh, what I'm trying to say here is, um, they say experience is the best teacher. So the non-academic Zimbabweans who went outside Zimbabwe, what they learned is very important for Zimbabwe. Those academics as well who went outside Zimbabwe, what they learned is very important. Let me tell you something about our situation in Zimbabwe. We have a rotten service delivery system. You go to work, you find that uh, someone is trying to write your birth certificate or is trying to, uh, you know, those uh, bursars who work in schools, is trying to write you a receipt for your school fees, is having a cup of tea there, is on a phone call talking to his friends and his parents in the rural areas. Uh, our, our approach and attitude to work is very bad in Zimbabwe. I can give an example of myself and many other Zimbabweans who are in diaspora. They will tell you that our approach to work in Zimbabwe was not correct. When we came to the diaspora, we learned the best attitude and the best approach to service delivery. And when we go back home, we really know what service delivery is all, all about and what work is all about and a good work, work ethic is all about. So everyone, academic and non-academic in diaspora, and those at home, they are important as well. We need to fuse these experiences. Their suffering is important. Uh, when we talk about it, we have somewhere to start from. OK. So you are mentioning that people in the diaspora will go back to Zimbabwe. But in the case of Jonathan Moyo, the Zimbabwe government has actually reported him to Interpol. They want him to be extradited to Zimbabwe. Is that the kind of approach that the government should be using? Uh, if anyone is uh, criminal offenses, they have to be reported and they, they have got to uh, be extradited back to Zimbabwe. So as Zimbabweans, it's a high time we face one another in the eyes and tell the truth. If you are being uh, suspected of wrongdoing, go and represent yourself. So whatever the government is doing, if they are trying to bring him back and try him, it's okay. If he is a, a saint, if he is clean, then he can go and uh, represent himself. But then why do we have so many prominent Zimbabweans living outside the country? Anyone who's running, who was running a business was specified. Anyone who was an activist or an editor, most of these people are outside the country. Is this not a problem? It's a very big problem. It's a very big problem. Uh, what I can tell you is that we are outside the country because 
uh, we could not stand the heat of poverty in, in Zimbabwe. We are economic refugees, most of us. Some people had uh, issues uh, with politics at home. You know, our politics has not been good and is not good at the moment as we speak. That's why we've got parties like Zimbabwe People's Party coming into the country to clean that bad name that we have in our politics, to show another perspective of politics that it's not a physical fight, it's a fight of ideas. Okay, what about billionaires? Why is it that our billionaires, they cannot even step into Zimbabwe? Our former business people, they cannot step into Zimbabwe. They cannot step into Zimbabwe because uh, it's not a good place for business as we speak. Zimbabwe is under sanctions. So uh, if you think you can come and invest in such a country where you cannot predict your earnings and your investment, then no sane business person would want to invest in Zimbabwe at the moment. The politics is not right. Uh, the attitude of the workers and every Zimbabwean is not right. We are all corrupt as Zimbabweans. So who wants to come to a country which has sanctions, which has corruption? Uh, we have to face one another in the eye and say what we are doing is bad. We have to shun corruption from the grassroots to the people in the high offices. We have to face one another in the eye. And we also, it's all those things that attract business. So our own local businesses cannot come and, you know, just put their money under the drain. Is, is it not that. that they face arrest if they come to Zimbabwe for crimes like the, the same crime that uh, Jonathan Moy is being wanted for? Is this not that they will be taken into jail and be accused of having supported the opposition? What I want to inform you is, uh, Mr. Gambakwe, as far as the ZPP intelligence is concerned, Jonathan Moyo is not out of ZANPF. Is the one running the information ministry of ZANPF by prox. Jonathan Moyo uh, is a counter strategy of ZANPF. So when they talk about the extraditing him, they, they will extradite him, but they will do nothing. It's a catch and release as usual. So never ever, this G40 Lacoste thing is an illusion. It's a made up thing to ensure that, it was made up to ensure that the ZANPF succession had sympathizers and sympathy. There was no way the world was gonna wake up and embrace Mnangagwa if Mugabe just woke up and say, this is my successor. That was not going to happen. They had to dramatize to ensure that they put Mnangagwa there with the sympathy from Zimbabweans and from outsiders. It happened. He got in and delivered the same thing. Okay. So Jonathan Moyo to ZPP is just as NPF, like people like Kasukuere, people like Walter Muzembi, those are counter strategies of ZPF. They are at work. Right, so I want us to, to focus this discussion on the solutions. Yes. What do we do to get the genuine diaspora to want to go back to Zimbabwe in a productive way? What we are doing is, uh, the first step is the coming of the Zimbabwe People's Party. We are rallying all the kids of Zimbabwe in the diaspora. They trust us because they know we have learned the right work ethics. We have learned a lot from the countries that we are staying at the moment. And we can implement that in Zimbabwe. Yes, we have had some diasporians in the past coming to Zimbabwe, but they were not the drivers of those buses. Jonathan Moyo was a, was a diasporian himself. He wasn't the driver of the ZANPF bus. Nick Mangwana is from the diaspora. He's not the driver of ZANPF. Uh, Dr. Ngululeko Sibanda of MDC is a diasporian. He's not the driver of the MDC uh, bus. We can talk about uh, Mr. Noah Manika. We can talk about Dr. Shumba of Zimfest. They are drivers of their buses. Zimbabweans should rally behind political parties like Zimbabwe People's Party. We are coming not to look for jobs, as people say. We have our jobs already. We simply wanted to clean our backyard of Zimbabwe so that uh, people can start to smile again. OK. So why is it that when people come from the diaspora, they don't want to join the MDC? 
they want to start their own parties. You have mentioned a lot of people, Noa Manyika, uh, you have mentioned even people who are in Zan PF now, like Nick Mangwana, people like uh, Gosana Moyo, they form their own parties. Why can't they join the NDC? Uh, let me tell you something, uh, Mr. Gambakwe. MDC is a good part to people who are in Zimbabwe who can easily be deceived. But to me, who is in Australia, to Vimbai, who is in the UK, to Caroline, who is in Germany, those people have witnessed what democracy is. Democracy is given birth by democratic institutions. An autocratic institution cannot give birth to a democratic party or a democratic country. Uh, if you look at the makeup of uh, MDC, it's an autocratic institution which is preaching about democracy. And Zimbabweans should know, no democracy will be born from an autocratic party. An autocratic party is one whose president is the champion is looked upon by everybody. Who's the president you put Lesos or what we call Mazambia so that he can step on and you ululate and sing for him. Those are, dem those are autocracies. Yes, we may think the name says democratic, but the behavior has no democracy in it. Everyone who is in diaspora, let me tell you, I have told the Zimbabweans, I've asked the Zimbabweans, do you know who the Prime Minister of Australia is? They don't know. It's a democracy. It's run by strong systems and strong teams, not by a strong men. Where there is a strong man, whom you see in E.D. Fe, Chamisa Chete Chete, no, you are still singing autocracy. That's where we are. So no sane diasporian would want to come and associate, except we also have some money mongers in the diaspora, people who, who are looking for jobs as well, who did not make it when they came to the diaspora, who are not happy in the diaspora, maybe they are facing other issues and they believe if they go home, they can cheat and say, I'm from the diaspora, so I can assist in the MDC. We have such people. Okay, so are you saying the only way the diaspora can be involved in Zimbabwe is through a party like ZPP? Is there no other option, no other non-political way of organizing the people in the diaspora? There is no non-political way, Mr. Gambakwe, because everything stops on politics. The same diaspora you are talking about has rally the funds and equipment toward the cyclone Idai. Some of the equipment, uh, when, they, when it reached the Zimbabwe, you would be asked, uh, maybe it's going to be given to ZANPF members only, or it can't be given because we don't know who you are representing. You know, the diaspora has been mistreated with so many charitable organizations and the things that they wanted to bring to Zimbabwe. But the reception when you go with uh, charity is charitable uh, issues or goods, the reception is not good. It turns political. So our politics, is, it's not about ZANPF only. It's both ZANPF and MDC. They are more like two partisan, two head-on that when they look at anyone else, they think, oh, it's that side or that side. So the diaspora needs a, a president they can trust to implement rule of law, democracy in total, and also a safe haven for their earnings and for their investments and for their money. There are so many big businesses in the diaspora. People who have technology, people who know a lot, who can come and make Zimbabwe better, but how do you come in when everyone is corrupt? You want to go to a police uh, post to register your, maybe your car at VID. You are told, ah, no, uh, we don't have papers, but uh, if you talk to our boss, maybe something will happen. You want uh, documents to register your company. You are told, ah, maybe come after the six months, but there's a way we can make it happen in, uh, in, in, in two days. You see how they want to, how they are corrupt I'm not talking about the government officials. I'm talking about officers of publics, these public servants. You are sick. 
in, in, in the diaspora, if you are sick, the ambulance comes to you in less than three minutes. The hospital, when you arrive there, the care is good. But when I'm sick in Zimbabwe, I go to Parinya to a hospital. The doctor sees me and says, ah, oh, no, we don't have equipment here. Uh, okay, go to Avenue's clinic. You go to that, you see that same doctor. So there is this corruption, my brother, which you cannot stomach when you are from the diaspora. You cannot, uh, you cannot stomach that. Our work ethic, the corruption is a cancer. Yes, we talk about Mnangagwa and all his cronies. They are just a mirror of who we are in our societies. It's, these people are in our communities, corrupt as us, we vote them into offices. They will continue the corruption and eat billions when we are eating thousands of that corruption. So when we face one another in the eyes and say, when we have a diaspora president, they know how to stop this corruption overnight. That corruption will go, I'm telling you, Mr. Gambakwe, ZPP president, two weeks, no one will be corrupt. From the Bedbridge border post where we now have two border posts, did you know that, Mr. Gambakwe? Bedbridge, we have the official border post and the unofficial down the river where goods are being, are being smuggled through Limpopo River. As I am speaking right now, the army soldiers are receiving 10 rand from people who are carrying goods. You know, cars drive from the South African side, they pack with goods there. Kids as young as two, four, four, four years old, Zimbabwean kids as young as four years old are crossing the river, getting those goods, carrying them to the other side, and the cars take them. Child labor, corruption, look at what it is. It's happening to us, the general people. That's why ZPP has said, they are not marching on we are not marching on 31 July. Let's march against ourselves first. And then we'll say, if you remove corruption from yourself, you will not tolerate it when it comes from Gambag. This is the ZPP me message, which is honest. Okay, you have mentioned that there's a lot of talent outside Zimbabwe. If you try to create a database, of all the skills that are out there? There is a big database. We do a, a lot of events in the diaspora. If I can give you, if I can refer you to one of them, there is one called the Zimo Achievers Awards. Zimo Achievers Awards is run by someone called Conrad Mwanza from the UK. He has Zimo Achievers Awards Australia, whose, uh, whose director is Mr. Method Mukundu. Yes, Zima Achievers UK, Zima Achievers South Africa, Zima Achievers America. So that platform, it will show you every Zimbabwean who is an achiever and where they are. We have some who don't go to those achievers. We've got events like our own independence. We celebrate it in every state in Australia. We, it's also celebrated in the UK everywhere. There are so many platforms that Zimbabweans are meeting where these talents are in several areas. So things are there, Mr. Gambao. Okay. So, can you walk me through your plan as ZPP? How are you going to, from day one, take all these Zimbabweans who are in the diaspora to come and make a contribution? Maybe not physically, but how are you going to get them to contribute? And what needs to change? What needs to change, Mr. Gambakwe, is our leadership. I think in the first place, you were talking about academics. Being an academic, Mr. Gambakwe, does not translate into being a good leader. Zimbabwe should know that. Leaders are born. They are not trained. If they were trained, then some political parties I know would have been the best in Africa and in the world. But it's not like that. ZPP is in the process of identifying these leaders who can champion good work ethics and good political practice in Zimbabwe. And we are not doing this through a Congress or an election. We are assessing and scrutinizing and vetting anyone who wants to join the PP as a leader, shadow MP, shadow councillor, or just as a leader of the party. So when we get that team, which is real leaders, 
who can inspire, because leaders inspire people to do things for themselves for free. This is where we are. So we are trying to create this team. And these people come from the diaspora. It doesn't mean that when you are a diasporian, you are a good leader. No. There are also people who are not leaders in the diaspora. There are also people who are leaders in Zimbabwe, but they now need to be rewired so that this corrupt mentality or the corrupt tendencies, they disappear from their lives. So we are creating a hybrid of Zimbabweans in diaspora who are leaders and Zimbabweans in Zimbabwe who are leaders. And then we tell them, this is what has to be done in a manner in which if you mess it up today, you go tomorrow. Not that you start to harass us to say, oh, there is a Congress after, you remove me after Congress in 20 years. It's not like that in ZPP. Hire and fire immediately because we really need Zimbabwe to come back to its knees. And we need honest leaders who are not self-centered. The me, me, me people, we don't need them. We want people who are willing to work in a team with strong systems. And once you implement such a system in Zimbabwe, once we have such a leadership, which will free our army, which will free our police, which will free our ju judicial system, which will free every other places like these parastatals, then you will see the diaspora flocking back into Zimbabwe. These people, they want to come to Zimbabwe. We've got kids who were born in the diaspora. We have never been to Zimbabwe, but they identify as Zimbabweans. They are multi-talented. They know stuff. They can change things. They can make stuff. So we are just waiting for Zimbabweans to accept us. We will not force Zimbabweans to accept us because that's not democracy. They will accept us one day and the diaspora will flock in and do things. Okay. In terms of special dispensations or the way to attract our own di diaspora, let's say I go to Zimbabwe now. I don't have a house in Harare. I don't have a job. I don't have anything on the ground. What is it that you're going to give to people who are coming from the diaspora to attract them back home? People who are coming from the diaspora, they have resources already. What they want is an environment where the current is stable, an environment where they get electricity 24-7, where they get water running from their taps 24-7, where refuse sewage is not the order of the day, where beans are collected as scheduled, where buses run on time, where trains run on time that will attract a Zimbabwean from the diaspora. They can come and invest anything. They don't even need any uh, discounts. All they need is a stable environment where the police officer is not going to harass you when you are driving your car because they want a bribe from you. This is what the I, diaspora want. I, I think you have captured a lot about what will happen in the, the future, what it will look like. I want to take you back to something that Jonathan may have said. He said that the problem in Zimbabwe is that the soldiers have never been in the barracks. They've always been interfering in politics in Zimbabwe. How are you going to stop soldiers from interfering in politics in Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe People's Party is a very honest part because we have, we have intelligence, Mr. Gambago. We have assessed every political party in Zimbabwe and what they have and what they don't have. We also have assessed every political party in Africa, and we know what they have and what they don't have. Now, let me take you down. Let me break it like this. Zimbabwe has got a party called ZANU-PF and ZAP. Zim uh, Namibia has a party called SWAPO. South Africa, ANC, Mozambique, Frelimo. Those political parties were sponsored when they were fighting for the liberation of their countries, they were sponsored to build armies. And you cannot separate the army from ANC, SWAPO, Frelimo, MPLOA, UNITA, KANU. You can't separate them from the army because they are the soldiers. Munangagwa is a soldier. Chiwenga is a soldier. How do you separate them from their colleagues? So that's who ZANU-PF are. We know that is ZPP. MDC, Students' Union, Workers' Union, that's who they are. You can't separate them from those people. Us ZPP, 
We are saying we are looking for leaders from those soldiers, from those students' union. Everyone is welcome to come to ZPP as long as you can, pro, you can uh, show that you can produce results. In ZPP, we value results. We don't value who you are. So everyone is welcome. So we, now coming to your question, Mr. Gambakwe, now that is ZPP, we know that there is a, a, a political part called ZANPF, which can never be separated from the army. What are we going to do to govern Zimbabwe in the presence of that political party, which is the army? That's the strategy which I will tell you in another day. That's what the MDC has failed to understand in our country. That's what parties like uh, Julius Malema understood in South Africa, and they are in parliament, agreeing at times and disagreeing at times with ANC, we have Unkondo Sizwe. So this is where we are as a party in ZPP. We are studying each and every political party. How can we coexist? Well, these people are Zimbabweans. I can't say MDC should go. Where will they go? They are Zimbabweans. Some people should go. Where will they go? They are Zimbabweans. We need them. We should unite as Zimbabweans and support the people who produce results. That's the ZPP strategy. Not just he is MDC or he is NPF for what what. This is what we do as ZPP. We appreciate the good that can be done by someone in MDC or by some, someone in NPF. If that person is to be rewarded, let it be. Okay. So results, results, results. Right. Do you think this is where the problem is? That ZANU PF is outsmarting the opposition at an ideological level and also at a military level. They have got both the muscle and they also have the gun. Do you think a Reynard Febish, if you know Zimbabwean soccer, do you think Reynard Febish was going? was going to be happy going to Egypt to play Cameroon or Egypt without pit and law. That would not happen. MDC, they are removing their own superstars because they did not infiltrate ZANU-PF. If ZANU-PF can infiltrate MDC, why can't MDC infiltrate ZANU-PF? If why can't MDC, with these 20 years, why can't they infiltrate the army? Why can't they infiltrate the police? Mind you, the army are kids who were in Zengeza and Mfakos and Telandaba in Blawai. They are city people who are deemed to be uh, MDC. Why are those people getting departed from MDC? So the MDC should ask themselves and see where they need to correct themselves. But as the ZPP, we are saying, if ZANU infiltrates us, we infiltrate them. If MDC infiltrates us, we infiltrate them. If that is the game they want, let it be. But for now, let's focus on good work ethics and give services to Zimbabweans so that they can smile again. OK. But you just mentioned that Jonathan Moyo is doing the strategy for ZANU PF. Yes. But now the MDC loves Jonathan Moyo. It means. There's no one on their side who is as smart and as strategic as Jonathan Moyo. That's why they've embraced him when he works for ZANU-PF. Uh, you know what? A political party like ZPP, we have departments. We have the Department of Intelligence. We have the Department of Finance and the Department of Communications and Publicity plus Education plus uh, Research. We have such departments. So any political party which needs to succeed should know who to associate with, not to associate with, should know who to have as a member and who not to have as a member. Should know who should speak about them and who should not speak about them. Let me tell you something. There are some, a lot of people who are not registered MDC or paid up MDC members who are busy harassing people on social media and saying wrong things that even affect the MDC itself. If you are not a, a ZPP member, if we see you talking about ZPP on social media and we don't have you as our member, we'll tell you to shut up 
because you don't know what's within us. You spread the wrong information. Even you, if you go to ZANPF, you find there are some people who are just talking, but maybe they're not even paid up ZANPF members. And these are the people who are fighting against one another. Sometimes the MGC Chamisa himself does not even know that there are people who are talking about MGC maybe in the UK, in South Africa, or anywhere. We are just fanatics. We are just people who hate one another as Zimbabweans. You know? So as a part, uh, you need to control your information desk. Who, should, who is speaking about you? Check it out. Do you have an intelligence department? Does MGC have an intelligence department? That can tackle than PF head on. Intelligence, not to fight physical. Physical fights, they are last resorts. If they do have, then they should have won over than PF long time ago. ZPP okay. is intelligence. Right. I, I want us to, to wrap this up. Where do you see us as Zimbabweans? Where are we now? Can you give us a summary of? How you assess the situation right now? Uh, Mr. Gambakwe, our problems do, did not start today. Our problems started during the days of colonialism. And to decolonize the Zimbabwean mind is a process. The education we received, where me and you were sitting in the, in the same class, you got 9 over 10 in mathematics and I get 5 over 10 in mathematics. I started to hate you and Kunda. You know, that's where our division, which you see today, started. The kind of education we received. So we need a political party which is willing to undo a lot of things. People uh, laughed when Vice President Kembo Mohad testified and said the whites did not teach us how to run the country. That's, that, that, that's the situation. We are still colonized. We need a political party. That's why the diaspora has come. We have lived with these white people. We know how they run their systems. And if we come to Zimbabwe, I'm telling you, if you ask anyone who is in ZPP, if you meet them, they will tell you it's not a walk in the park. It's not a walk in the park. It's not business as usual. Just check when a, a, a white person is on their yard, how green it is. But is a manager or a teacher like you, go to a, a, a school like Peter House, you will see a, 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 a Zimbabwean teacher, sorry, a, an African teacher and a Caucasian teacher. Look at their yards how different it is. Someone has passion, has good attitude, it's attitude towards ourselves, towards our work, towards our productivity that we need to work on. Attitudes towards one another. Leaders don't eat first. Leaders eat after the people they lead have eaten. But what is happening today? Leaders are eating first. And this is the, it's a wrong Zimbabwe. We are, we are under autopilot. It's upside down. We need a real political party with the people who have experienced something good somewhere, not who have read about something good somewhere. Reading about it does not help anything. We have, I myself have lived, and other people in the diaspora have lived, even you in South, South Africa, wherever you are, you have seen the roads that you drive in, anyone which even an aeroplane can get in. If we take you to Zimbabwe, you won't like to build a, a, a road with portals. You like a road like N1. Because you saw, you experienced it. Experience is the best teacher. Please, Zimbabweans, embrace the Zimbabwe People's Party. Embrace leaders who are driving the buses themselves from the diaspora. We have the keys to Zimbabwe. It's not about saying, I have friends in America. We are here as Americans, as Germans, as British, as Australians, but of Zimbabwean origin, willing to come and translate everything. Okay. Mr. Jason Midzi, I, I, I really get what you're saying, but I, I have a feeling that there is somewhere where we, we as diasporans are failing to penetrate the existing system. 
you remember when Idim Nangagwa took over in 2017, a yes. lot of Zimbabweans supported Idim Nangagwa. People yeah. have testified, like uh, Trevor Nguve, Opo Chumono. I, I think you, you mentioned quite a number of other people that says, let's give Idi a chance. These people know everything that you are saying. They've lived in those countries. Why did they fail to penetrate the, the kind of system that is there in Zimbabwe and they ended up frustrated with the system? Let me tell you something. Uh, ZANPF and MDC were not meant to run a dead country like Zimbabwe. They were meant to run a functional country like South Africa. But a dead country like Zimbabwe, it needs a super leaders to work on it. So these people in the diaspora, uh, you, don't quickly, you don't quickly trust that ED has come to power, so I'm packing my bags, I'm going. You give half a year to see whether it's going in the right direction. So when we waited and, and, and looked and tried, yes, everyone supported that uh, Mugabe was going because we were all, you know, excited that Mugabe was going. But after looking for a year, we found out that really, uh, Changre and Mugabe maybe were better because the, the people they left their parties with have even ruined Zimbabwe further. So definitely, definitely, the Zimbabweans in diaspora, they were excited like everyone else. But after having a look from the side, from the terraces, we found out that that was a dummy. People were sold a dummy. That's why you are seeing us today, June, 20, June 2019, ZPP was formed. We saw that our country is going nowhere. Let's get in, let's step in as the diaspora so we can now interpret things and work with our folks at war to get Zimbabwe to smile again. Okay, so that bit of failing to penetrate the system, how is that going to be addressed? It's if going to be addressed. You, up, you come and they beat you. Are you not going to just go back? If you go uh, and they, they stop you, they, they tell you no. Don't change the currency of the rand. What are you going to do? To people who have done medicine, Mr. Gambabwe, if you go to an accident, if you find someone who has a head injury, they need help. But because of concussions, they are confused. They can beat you in as much as you are an ambulance officer trying to help them. But do you stop helping them? You don't. You know that this person needs help. Us in the diaspora, we know that Zimbabwe needs help. But do we succumb to beating? Should we even be beaten when you go to that politics of fighting and beating people and you are from the diaspora, you are not ready to assist Zimbabwe. There are ways you approach a situation which is volatile like our country. And the ways we are approaching is called a revolution in the ZPP. We are changing Zimbabweans one by one. Whoever joins ZPP will tell you, ah, those guys are great. There's a promising future because it, it involves education as well. Because look at what whites did when they came to Africa. They came with a gun and a Bible. Because you cannot complete a revolution without education. The Bible and the schools were completing their gun revolution. Now, us, in addition to having what it takes to change Zimbabwe, we also need to educate. So we are very patient. Educators are patient. We are very patient. We are educating region by region, one by one, and we will be there. Let me tell you something. MDC got a lot of constituencies and wards in Zimbabwe. If they had run them very well better than ZANPF, ZANPF were going to change. Zimbabwe was going to be a good country. But because together they are delivering a short country, they are doing a short job, Zimbabwe will forever be a dead country like that where you, you, you know what is happening. Fuel queues, everything, name it. It's, it's just not good at the moment. OK, so you are going to be fighting in 2023, both 
ZANU PF and MDC. Is that the strategy? Yes. We are going to contest in the 2023 elections and it's at an advanced stage. If I can tell you that uh, uh, we have populated Zimbabwe with the shadow MPs, whom we are teaching what good governance is, it's a process. They are appreciating whom we are teaching what a service delivery is. What does an MP do? Do you know our people don't even know what an MP does? Our own political parties, they go to lie to the people that an MP is only supposed to be doing laws in the parliament, leaving the, constitu the constituents unattended. So there are so many issues in Zimbabwe that we are, if you check Zimbabwe People's Party, you see a lot of Facebook pages in different constituencies in Zimbabwe. We are trying to encourage this open communication. Anyone who wants to talk to a leader should access them there and there. Not that for you to talk to a leader, it's a long process. You get there, you are told, come next week, you know, things like that. So there are a lot of things we are implementing on the ground right now. That's why we said we're not participating in a demonstration. We are busy changing Zimbabwe so that we can have a correct attitude, correct leadership in the country. 2023, definitely ZPP is going to have a stake in governance. And you will see what will be happening in our constituents and wards. Okay. I think let us end this discussion with the question of a coup. Let's say there's a coup in Zimbabwe between now and 2023, would you support it? And also, what was your view as ZPP or as members, top members of ZPP during the last coup? Uh, the, what I'm telling you, top members of ZPP, when the last coup was, when the last coup not a coup was done, we knew, uh, we say, Nyoka Yai Vunura, the snake was, Reshading, reshading itself. That was evolution of ZANU PF. That was not a coup. Like I told you, that Jonathan is a counter strategy. Those guys dramatized. Let me tell you one thing. When Trangirai said no reform, no election, what happened? Dramatization was done. Joyce Mujuru formed a party. Joyce Mujuru was insulted in public. Is Jembere Kudo Tito, blah, 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 blah. So that you if Tsangira was going to say no reform, no election in 2013, Joyce Mjuru was going to contest and legitimize ZANPF. One. Let's come back to, 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 to the 2017, the 2017 coup, not a coup. That ZANPF who were, us in the uh, ZPP, we knew our intelligence tells us that ZANPF were doing their succession strategy. Like I told you, ZANPF and the army are inseparable. So th they cannot do a coup against themselves. That's illogical. They can only evolve using dramas. You know, the army, they are crafty, they are dramatic, you know, things like that. So you cannot, uh, th that's what is happening. So ZANPF, if they do a coup, they can't do a who are against themselves, they would simply be changing their leaders in a dramatic way as usual. So whatever, if there is a coup, we don't even support it. It's not a coup to us. It's just some, some people who are doing their usual strategies who will continue to focus on building our structures and garnering for 2023. Okay. Uh, I think we've had a very long discussion <laughs> on a very big number of issues. You know, what is painful to me is I know that there are so many young people that are smart that are contributing to other countries. Yes. And I think I'm lacking something to bring all these things together into our own country. And I hope that you, you provide us with the answer as ZPP so that we don't just wait for 2023. I would have wanted us to start seeing action right now, which is yeah, they, what is proposed by, for example, the people who are saying demonstration without a plan, 
at least I was going to expect a party like yours to have a plan on the ground, which will start showing people that maybe there's an alternative direction we can take. We are actually on the ground, like I said, to change Zimbabwe, it's not about changing the government only. It's about changing everybody. The systems are rotten. The people's attitude to work, Mr. Gambako, is not the best. You can bring Barack Obama to Zimbabwe right now. He will fail with flying colors because the people have not been rewired. That's what ZPP is doing. ZPP will deliver a stable Zimbabwe politically, judicial, every sector, even the current, so that we have clean politics, smart politics, and everyone can troop back into the country. No one is willing to leave their comfort to go and running around the streets of Harare with baton sticks, even their, their comfort in Jobek. It's not like that. So ZPP is willing to stabilize Zimbabwe politically, and we are very level-headed. What ZANPF does correctly, in ZPP, we say they've done well. We encourage. What MDC does correctly, we say you've done well. We encourage. It doesn't make us part of the alliance. Also, it, does, it also does not make us part of ZANU. But we are now bringing smart politics and clean politics to our country, which is not there. Right. It's, it's a long, it's a, it's a journey. It's not going to be an overnight thing. So we are patient. And Zimbabweans should be patient. And Zimbabweans should join ZPP. So we walk this chain together. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Jason Nidzi from the Zimbabwe People's Party. You are the communications director. Yes, sir. And how many other directors do we have? We have uh, four more other directors. We have Vimbai Chuswa, who is the director of education and uh, policy development. Uh, in Zimbabwe, poly parties like those ones in Zimbabwe, they call such a person political commissar. Okay. Uh, we have the director of research called Maslin Mpof. She's from Bulilima Mangwe. Uh, Vimbai is from, um, from Wange, but he's in UK. Maslin Mpof is from Bulilima Mangwe, but she's in uh, Denmark. Uh, we have Ishani Suzinyoka, who is the director of uh, Protocol, our intelligence. He's in South Africa. We have uh, myself, uh, the director of communications and publicity. Uh, those, and we have Mr. Veja, who is stationed in Zimbabwe in our head office of Gweru. The party headquarters are going to be in Gweru and are in Gweru. That's where we have the di another director called okay, Mr. God knows Veja. I'm able to talk to them. And I, I want people to have exposure to your directors. And I want Correct. to interrogate them the same way we are interrogating your thoughts. <laughs> if we bring them here, I think it's important because we want to know what it is that other people in your party have to offer. So Thank you very much. I'm going to bring them. I will bring you a Maslin Mpof, who is from Bulilima Mangwe, who is in Denmark. She's the director of research. She's going to talk to you next Monday. Okay. That's fantastic. At least we'll have a three way discussion. And maybe we can even talk about her life story to see. You said that a leader must have proven themselves. Correct. So we want to see how these leaders that you, you have put in place have proven themselves. Thank you very much. So uh, we have got quite a number. So uh, like I said, uh, you, we have five uh, directors. Uh, next Monday, a director, another director is coming. All right, thank you very much. We we'll, we'll come together. Is there anything else you want to say before we close? I just want to encourage Zimbabweans that uh, this is the time we have got to hold one another's hands. Those who go to church, let's pray together. Those who don't go to church, let's simply love one another as Zimbabweans. Nation building starts with loving one another. And let's not be chaotic. Because if we want a modern society, we have to behave in a modern way. If we want a civilized society, we have to behave in a civilized way. If we want a chaotic society, we also have to be chaotic. That's why Zimbabwe People's Party won't be participating in the 
July 31 demonstrations. Not because we support ZANPF, not because we support uh, corruption, no, but we believe politicians can engage one another in a civilized manner and start to give services to the very important people, the voters. They are suffering, they need solutions. I can't vote you, so I will go again and run in the road for you. It's not like that in ZPP. When you vote me, I should run for you now. I'm your servant. We believe in servant leadership. So may God bless Zimbabwe. Thank you very much, sir. And we had a very long discussion today. I think people have a lot to digest. Your number is on the screen. I would like to invite people to engage with you and answer you or, and ask you questions directly. And then you can answer them directly on WhatsApp. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Gambakwe.